It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Bolts and the Steelers next on Madden NFL 22. We are at the confluence of the Ohio, Allegheny, and Monongahela Rivers at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, PA. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. So the Steelers' offense getting set for their first drive. And here's a look at their leader, standing 6-4. And this could be a whole lot of fun because if his game plan goes into effect early, we're going to see some shots downfield, aren't we? What did he talk to us about? Stretching the field. Wants to open things up for not just his receivers, but for anything underneath. Well, that was the theme, the front page of the sports section, where the columnists write, possible air raid. So we'll see. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the coaches view that, right? What? Who gave away the game plan? <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious, though. That'll help them win. And opening there on that first down run as he gets his forward for about eight or nine. That looks to be eight officially, so second and two. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Out of the gun, it's Moreno. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. But they certainly came out firing in this one, and while that one was incomplete, I can't imagine that'll be the last shot that they take in this game. An early test, two plays in. This is third and two. Now Marino to throw it. Open man is Miller. He's got it. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. They brought in the heavy set on third down, and that usually means running play, but we have seen them throw out of that formation. And sure enough, they snuck the tight end out on that one, wound up hitting him for a first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Hands it off out of the gun. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. That was a pretty good job defensively to hold him to a two-yard run, but I've got to think this offensive line, they're asking their quarterback for a different type of a run, one that they rely on, one they have confidence in, one they feel like they can block. From the 41, Marino. That one complete to Bettis. The result only four yards there on the play. And that's going to lead to a third down. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area. But they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. To throw is Moreno. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I'm not sure that this play was designed for him specifically, but they got through the progressions and got the ball to him. So second catch on the drive, he may not be a primary guy, but they definitely want him involved, don't they? Uh, absolutely. This early, the opening drive, as you said, two catches. So if they can get him going in the passing game, that should open up his running game, too. So from Charger territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 47. Here's Moreno to throw. Throw right side, taken in by Swan. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far in the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. Marino looks to toss it again. 
He's got the hook up to Miller. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. A gain of six there on first. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll take this forward for two, maybe three. But we do have a flag down, and they're already marching backward. That time, the right guard sending him backwards. And so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now, depending on situations. You can get the bulky guy, the fast guy. No matter what, though, you can't hold them. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Again, it's Marino. He'll complete this one to Swan. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 20-yard line. And how about this first drive? They're being aggressive, slinging it around. Really confident, too, because they're not trying to fool them with running plays, throwing it, and they're being very successful right now. Now Marino on first down. Got a man. It's Swan complete. Seven yards to pick up there. Well, I know from past experience, before you actually play a game, you visualize what's going to happen. And I don't know anyone who doesn't visualize themselves being in the center of what's going on. That's three catches for him here in the early going. He's got to like the way this is starting. Absolutely. Three catches on any drive is good. Opening drive, that's a tone setter. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. This pass has been on point on this drive. Hasn't it been very accurate? Got the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, that would be pinpoint here. As I was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. We're scoreless after one. Second quarter action from Pittsburgh. It is the Steelers in control of the football as they go to work on a first and goal. Gets him back at the 14. Melvin Ingram dropping the hammer off the edge. The first and goal looked like things were set up nicely, and now all of a sudden on second and goal, Charles, a big challenge ahead of them. And you have to know when you're this close to the goal line, things are going to happen faster, so you've got to get the ball out quick. Not going to have much time in the pocket before the defenders bring pressure. It's second and goal, but now all the way back at the 14. Another try after the first down sack. Marino toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Back-to-back -back great plays defensively. Get the sack on first and goal. A great job in coverage there. All of a sudden, they're looking at third and goal from further back than when they started. And a really good play callers look ahead and down in distance sequence. Now he's got to backtrack a little bit and go maybe off his play sheet to try and dial something up here. Third and goal, Marino. His throw caught right around the six. Ten yards gets him closer, but now it's fourth and goal. Nice job understanding the situation. Third and long, kept the play in front of them and made the tackle. They gave up a good chunk of yardage, but it does force a fourth down. <laughs> 
Now Chris Boswell for the Steelers field goal try. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Boswell's kick is good. And the Steelers will jump out to a three-zip lead. So an opening drive field goal maybe doesn't whip this crowd into a frenzy, but I think that they will take the early lead. There's no doubt about it. They will always take the early lead, and maybe that celebration comes later if they play well and they can break things open. But right now, this is all about letting the offense just get settled in. successful field goal try here's Boswell to send it away taken in at the three and they'll be backed up to start this drive as he's taken down right around the 15 so here's the Charger offense making their way out and they'll be let out by the guy under center Charles their quarterback and the first possession is until the second quarter but what's nice about it it's only down three so what you sell your team on is, look, one possession, one drive, we put it in the end zone. We're in the lead in this game. Let's go, guys. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. To throw, Warner. His throw incomplete. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Warner from the gun. Oh, going for Jefferson downfield. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now Warner. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And he'll take this across the 25 before going out of bounds. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. They'll run on first down. Means, and the second wave of tacklers is gonna get him as they stop him behind the line. Cameron Hayward getting up here to make the stop. Two things to watch. First, his strength and being able to break out of that initial contact. But at his size, once you slow his momentum, it's hard for him to get it started again and end up tackling him behind the line of scrimmage. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. Warner. To the right side and complete to Jefferson. And he'll be out right at the 35. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness there's a premium for all of that now. On third down, Means. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. We tend to give those running backs that are slashers a lot of credit, but how about guys who are maulers? Because that's what you want in short yardage situations, and we just saw that occur right there, didn't we? Vertical, downhill running. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. A play fake, now Warner. 
And he finds a man on a crossing round. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. A perfect example right there, Charles, of why they love this rookie runner. And think about how the NFL and the college games are meshing together more and more. You don't have to go to the NFL and learn a new set of skills. What you did in college often makes you ready for the NFL. Second quarter, two minutes remain, 3 nothing. our score. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime need to give the, Need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage, and that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. And he's got his man in stride, complete. A gain of six there on first. One of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. Four yards to go on second down from the seven. Out of the gun, here's Warner. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked off inside the five. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Defensively that time, they were in zone coverage. As a rookie QB, what lesson can you learn there? Well, understand this. You saw zone in college, and the defensive backs reacted but they don't react like they do on this level. So when they're in zone and they see the ball coming to them, they'll react at least a half a second faster. You've got to know where you want to go with the ball and be decisive with it. Otherwise, the end result can be something you don't like. They'll start the drive with Harris. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv, and you run into a tough crowd. Throwing on second and eight, Marino. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Antonio Brown, the intended receiver. And that'll make it third down. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, yeah, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. And this pass broken up. 
Now the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. The Steelers send out their punter now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. And a fair catch called for and taken right on the midfield strike. A 40-yard punt, no return. And this offense will take over right at the midfield strike with a first and 10. The Chargers going to take over now late in this first half. And they had a nice little drive going last time. Threw the interception in the red zone. Costly. Bad enough to throw it anywhere, but that drives coaches insane when they're thinking about Hey, we've got a shot at points already. We're already in a spot where you're thinking you've got three on the board for sure, and to come away with nothing, that's a really tough one for them to swallow. Yeah, will they make up for it? Throw right side caught by Winslow. That catch good for only a couple. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. There just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. Order to throw. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far and brings up third down. Oh, he caught it. Just couldn't get the feet down. Couldn't get that toe tap sequence, right? I was ready to call him tippy toes if that one was completed. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Now Warner. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And they stop him up short of the first down as they get him about the 43. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. The key to any screen play is all in the deception. That means everyone on the offensive side of the ball. But someone gave it up because that one wasn't very well concealed. And the defense able to rally to him and hold him for just a short game. So on trots the field goal unit, and wow, this is going to be a challenge here. They spot it on the midfield stripe, so it is a 60-yard attempt here. That's leaking to the right, and he missed it by a foot or two. It's no good. So we reach halftime here in the Steel City with the Steelers on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, let's run through the next-gen stats for the Chargers in that first half. And they did not do much at all in terms of throwing the football in those first two quarters. That's going to need to improve if they want to erase this deficit. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. the second half gets underway. This taken in at the goal line. And beyond the 20, but not by much. Let's in go, fact, go. just a yard pass there to the 21. The Chargers getting ready to go here to start this third quarter. And they're on the losing end of things here. What do they need to do if they're going to turn things around, CD? Partner, it's awfully close to being a must drive here, I think, for them. Because I think a touchdown here in this opening drive is something they absolutely have to have. They only managed three points in the first half. They know that's not going to get it done. So without adding pressure to them, they already know the stakes. They need a touchdown here to get things started. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. They go over the middle, and it's complete to start the drive. Here's 
here's Warner. Oh, not sure he saw the linebacker there as that's batted down and incomplete. And that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Back to throw. Warner. Complete. Jefferson the target. And he is going to have the Chargers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I know they'd love to take some heat off of that young quarterback, but so far, not much in the running game. And this won't help things either. A loss on that play. Second and 11. Operating from the gun, Warner. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And just like that, it's third down. Looking to throw. Warner, and that nearly intercepted. Well, for a guy known for his hands defensively, that's a ball he probably thinks he should have come up with. But instead, it's fourth down. On is the Chargers punter now, as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down to close to the goal line at the one-yard line. You rarely call your punter a weapon, but he certainly was there. How about that? Pinning him down at the one-yard line and helping out the defense in a big way. I'm telling you what, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I might be thinking safety right now. Starts the drive on the ground. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Now it's Marino. This is caught by Antonio Brown. And they'll get him down up past the 15. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what do you think. Mean by that? Broke, yeah, broke, broke, broke. he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then he curls back inside for the completion. They'll throw on first down with Marino. And that'll be off the mark too far out in front, and it's incomplete. He released that awkwardly. It almost looked like a pitcher who gripped his fastball a little too hard and let it go late and it bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, one of those fastballs that ends up at 57 feet, not 60 feet, 6 inches. Just a little short with the arm, which is unusual because we saw him in warm-ups. He's got a big, strong arm when he delivers it with confidence. From the gun, he'll hand this off. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Oftentimes, we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the pass. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most.
most valuable unit, but you're right, it might go to them in this game. I like that, MVU. Well done. Eluding the pressure right. Moreno slides and he'll have the first down. We just saw a nice example of why teams often bring in baseball guys to teach quarterbacks how to slide in key situations. You want to protect your franchise guy. Make sure he doesn't get hurt. He did exactly that on that play. A perfect slide to avoid the big hit and pick up a first down. Now a give running left, it's Bettis, and he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards, second down coming up. Second down at seven. From the shotgun, Marino. Got a man and he hits him in stride. First down. Pass incomplete. Well, listen, when you've got the lead, there's absolutely no sense trying to fit a ball in where you shouldn't. You can see the coaching in his head taking place on that play because he saw he had a receiver in the area. He just put it well over his head out of harm's way. A second and 10, fourth coming here. Third quarter action in the Steel City of Pittsburgh, PA. Moreno here from the gun. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Three corners in the books. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Pittsburgh. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. So from Charger territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 46. They hand this off to Harris. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're gonna continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? Again, it's Harris on second down. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And the Steelers on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and five. That throw by Marino incomplete. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs. Able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. And that is no good. And this score will stay go, right where it go, is. Go. 
Maybe an important fourth quarter miss as this stays a three-point game. Yeah, now overtime is very much in the equation here. Just what you mentioned, a three-point game. They get a drive, put it through the post. We could have some free football, couldn't we? And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. Their defense was able to hold serve, albeit with a little help from that missed field goal as they settle in now first and ten. Here's a handoff out of the gun. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, it's hard to have vision as a runner and find a hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way. They stacked that one up really well. But give him credit. Instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play, which might have turned into a big loss, Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. A field goal from this spot likely out of the question. They've got to get closer here on third down. From the gun, Warner. And that is incomplete. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. On is the Chargers punter now, as he's on to kick it away. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is, is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays. But it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. A nice burst there as they'll get about seven that time on the first down run. A tight game like this. Such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line. they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back. Tell him to take care of the ball and try and move forward. Throwing on second and three. Marino, he's going deep for Brown. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. Marino to throw on third. He's going to let it go again. And got his man complete. And he will finally be taken down, but not before he reaches the 38. A big play that time for Pittsburgh. Dialing up that play call certainly meant that he grabbed a little extra shot of courage on that one because normally on third and short, you're just trying to move the sticks, get the ball just past that line of scrimmage. Instead, they take the big shot downfield, and it pays off. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Out of the gun, it's Marino. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. Got his man. It's caught for a Steelers touchdown. A great play there. 38 yards. And the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. In today's NFL, you know, we talk about quarterbacks and their speed and accuracy, but there's still something about a guy slinging one downfield. And I'm telling you, nothing will light up a crowd more than a play like that. Here in the stadium, all eyes were on the 
receiver streaking downfield, and you know everyone was thinking, throw it, he's open. What a connection there for the touchdown. And that wound up traveling at even 58 yards in the air, according to Next Gen Stats. touchdown originally and this will stay a touchdown after the video review so they had it right Chris Boswell now for the extra point it's up and good and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip just a four play drive that time and it ends with the Steelers finding the end zone Touchdown. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. The Chargers getting set to go. And you're still in this game. I mean, yeah, you haven't scored. Offense obviously has struggled, but you're only two scores down, so all hope not lost. Not at all, because we're talking about the NFL, and teams can score fast in this league. Quick strikes, you're right back in it. You're exactly right, keeping hope alive. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Throwing to start the drive. Warner. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A big game that time for the Chargers. Well, that's something you haven't had to talk about much this game. A nice big play right there. But this team, overall, they haven't done a whole lot offensively. Well, they're still sitting on the goose egg. We talk about defenses having pride in a shutout. This offense wants to get rid of that zero. The big play has him all the way out near midfield for a first and ten. Operating from the gun. Warner. He finds his man complete. It's Chandler. Seven yards to pick up there. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Now a dump off here complete. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. One of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He said, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. In this case, he picks up a first down. It'll be Warner on first down. That escapes the sand. But now he's swallowed up and taken down. It'll be a loss of 10. And it'll bring up second. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, Looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has, but in his defense, he hasn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense, I got it. Yeah. See what I did there? Yeah. He needs better protection, that's for sure. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. And now the focus is really clear. They need to get that first down and either get out of bounds or maybe use one of those timeouts. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone, and unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. 
Too many zeros on the stat sheet thus far. No touchdown passes, no points for his team, but he remains undaunted. Still attempting to get his team on the scoreboard, firing the ball downfield. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. And they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this defense will take over right at midfield. Well, they had to take one final shot at the end zone, but now things are looking really bleak. And I agree with that totally. You had to take the shot if they did score. You know, whether you call it a mirror. But now it appears that the referee's been buzzed, and we'll get a review, and this being inside two minutes of play, everything coming from up above. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide, and I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things, but even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the officials and the folks in New York got a second look at this one, and the call is going to be overturned. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10, right at the 50-yard line. On the give, this is Harris. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. And the Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Now here's another carry for Harris. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds left to go. And the knee is taken for the Steelers out of the victory formation. Chargers going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go in the game. Marino's going to take a knee, and that should just about do it. Brent, I can just tell you from experience, there's nothing like pitching a shutout on defense, but even more so when it's a tight game. I mean, when every defensive play is crucial and you don't give up any points, boy, they're going to feel awfully good about themselves after this one. Yeah, exactly. The offense wasn't humming, but hey, all they needed was, well, you can't score one point. All they needed was two points. Well, you can't score two points on offense. All they needed was at least three, and they got what they needed. They got what they needed. Exactly right. So this one in the win column for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And not all W's are created equal, CD, and this one came in shutout fashion. Well, their offense certainly didn't need to do anything, right? They could take the day off, and they did. But the defense, they carried them in a big way. Yeah, look, the offense obviously stuff to work on, but they did enough, and the defense carried the load. Well, you know what they say, it's always fun to work on things if it didn't go well in your game with a victory in your pocket. And that's what they've got going forward.